right let's talk about uh, dimension one dimensional arrays <coughs> now arrays are actually you know when you take uh, a variable um, you do something like this right okay now the thing is like if I have to store like 100 values then I am I going to have like um, y right or x1 x1 x2 x3 up to 100 <coughs> it's not going to be practical so this is where uh, uh, arrays come in handy uh, because uh, array can have one identifier something like my okay, let me take simple name one identifier and multiple values like this right <coughs> multiple values and uh, then uh, you know there's this only one identifier is there but you, you are storing multiple values and these values can be stored uh, in contiguous memory locations nearby memory locations right so we can access them fast now the question is how am i going to access each value actually we use something called index the index in uh, an array it starts with zero so the first value is in the index zero second value one two three like that although there are four elements here you can see the index varies from zero to three now how, how am i going to access the value i can call uh, the array name within square brackets i can put the index value so x0 uh, equals to five right so if i say print x0 it will print the value five right so i can access uh, the value means i can change the value also i can put x0 equals x0 plus one then um, you know six will be uh, rep uh, five will be replaced by six right so that's the advantage now if i if i can use a for loop <coughs> And if I use the for loop uh, variable as index, uh, I can have index um, changing from 0 to 3. Right? I can say 4 index 0 to 3. What I can do is I can print uh, x. x is the identifier for the uh, array. Uh, and within brackets I can put instead of uh, 0 1 2 3 like that I can put index because this index is going to start as uh, 0 and move up to 3 okay. so now what will happen is it will start from 0 it will first access x 0 because index is 0 at the beginning and it will output y 5 next step index will be incremented by 1 now it's going to print uh, x 1 which is 10 in the next loop it is going to print uh, x2 which is 35 uh, next loop is going to print uh, x3 which is uh, 60 so now you can see we can print the whole array in fact in python of course you can simply print the whole array by using print uh, x right this uh, for loop can be used to access uh, each value in an array or a list individually for example if I want to um, display the uh, squared value of this I can use if I want to change the existing value I can use this method but if you uh, just say print uh, x identifier for the array it will just print the print all the values right so let me show you uh, a Python example it's really easy uh, and this type of array is called uh, a one dimension array because we are having only uh, values in only in x direction we can also have a two dimensional array uh, which will have x coordination and y coordination as well that's later on and in python we don't have an array object so we uh, we implement arrays using uh, a data structure called list So let me show you. So you go to the Python. Okay. 
So I can simply again I can use the same example. Uh, I can say x equals square brackets five comma ten comma thirty five comma sixty. Right, as I told you, I can simply uh, invoke the print command, and inside I can say x print x. You see, it's going to print the elements in the array. If I want to access them individually, I can say print uh, x zero. Uh, I can say print x uh, three. There you go. Now, what will happen if I put an index which is not there? Like, okay, I put four. <coughs> going to give an error and it says list index out of range true because there's no index 4 because it starts from 0 1 2 3 so remember every time uh, the index starts with 0 so if I put this into a for loop 4 index in range you know what the for loop right uh, 0 2 3 uh, I'm going to display the squared value of each value each number print uh, x index okay so find five is uh, 25 so when, when I put uh, double asterisk, it means um, it raises to the power, right? So x index raise uh, power to uh, x index uh, to the power of two. That's what it means, right? Raises to the power. Or else I can simply multiply twice x index into x index. Right now, did you notice that it uh, multiplied only three numbers, whereas it should be multiplying four numbers? So that is because the for loop doesn't go up to the maximum value here <coughs> the upper boundary it goes only one less that is up to two so in order to access everything all the values yeah, i need to use four there now it goes from zero to three there you go okay so that's how you implement arrays so that's what he said here in uh, some weird examples with eggs right uh, this is uh, defining uh, an array which is called car name actually the identifier is the car makers right so what they have done is they have uh, accessed uh, all the values in the car makers array and put them into one variable called car name right so remember we use uh, square brackets here and you can see accessing individual values everything that i explained just now so two dimensional arrays are not required at the moment uh in pseudocode you can write like this if you want set array to a b c d you can even have uh, text values numbers okay so the arrays are done Mm, this is not uh, new to you the <coughs> the memory or the storage <coughs> the units that we use bits bytes and this is the standard that we use now kibibyte, byte which is uh, uh, 1024 bytes uh, kilobytes and remember in the new uh, standard uh, we use these weird names kibi maybe gibi and tebi and uh, we go by 1024 the reason is uh, when we multiplied when we approximated it 2000 uh, what happened was we left out this 24 and 24 got calculated accumulated and it was a huge amount so now uh, the standard is to go for 1024 and also when you are writing the uh, unit K is capital, I is uh, simple, and the B is going to be capital as well, right? So, heavy byte. 
Maybe byte. Maybe byte and so on. Right? Okay. So, uh, first of all, let's create a book of contents. Okay. So, for this book, of course, it's important that you write the um, new standard. And there's a term called nibble. Nibble is actually a, bit, a group of four bits. Group of eight bits is called a byte. Nibble is half of that. Put these in order from smallest to largest. Smallest will be here is the kilobyte and then you have the megabyte you have the gigabyte and there are terabyte and then petabyte try to use the new standard <coughs> but even uh, the old standard is kind of accepted here because they have given questions out of that right so uh, then you know that when you go for bits <coughs> now when you go to a shop you don't ask for sugar as uh, right now you know that uh, when you go to a shop uh, and if you want sugar you don't go and ask like uh, give me uh, 20,000 milligrams of sugar right <laughs> that's weird uh, so just like that when it comes to files you know <coughs> you don't go by bits and kilobytes all the time you go for higher values right and then uh, because uh, it's it's going to take uh, a lot of storage space <coughs> uh, it's important that we uh, save space otherwise we will run out of space we'll have to upgrade the storage um, one method uh, to utilize the space is to compress the files. Now, <coughs> actually there are two types of compressions. Uh, there's one called lossy compression. The other one is called lossless compression. Now, as the name says, lossy compression, you are going to lose some of the data. So imagine that you have a suitcase and you are going to fill uh, your clothes in it. And then you find out you can't close the suitcase. So what you do is you leave out some of the uh, items. That is like lossy compression you are going to lose some of the data and still you are able to compress right so if uh, if suitcase is a fixed uh, file size uh, storage size we were able to put more data into it but we lost some data in lossy compression in lossless compression you will somehow rearrange you will think of uh, a rearrangement in a different rearrangement maybe rolling all the clothes and uh, uh, arranging them and somehow you will uh, fit everything into that same space so you have more data there but in a small space so that's like lossless compression when you open the suitcase you are able to get everything that you had earlier but in lossy compression you have lost some of, lost, uh, some of the data and you are not going to get back so compression is uh, mainly used in images uh, but it can be used in large files as well so one of the <coughs> compression types is called run length encoding. In short, we call it RLE. Uh, this is a very uh, simple, really easy uh, compression technique. Uh, it uses a mathematical uh, equation. It's a data compression algorithm supported by most bitmap file formats, for example, TIFF, BMP, and PCX. It's suitable for compressing any type of data, not only images and uh, but the content of the data affects the compression ratio achieved uh, so let's uh, explore what is best useful by looking at how it works so the compression amount is always dependent on the amount of data now we normally see this right when you take a large file like one gb file and if you try to compress that only a little amount will be reduced right so run length uh, encoding works by reducing the size of repeating string <coughs> Um, a repeating uh, string is called a run and typically encoded in two bytes two bytes this is two bytes yeah. the first byte represents the number of uh, characters in the run and the second is called the run count ah, right. the second byte uh, is the value of the character in the run which in which in the range of 0 to 155 
is called the run value so we have the run count and the run value okay, it's it's really easy it's really easy uh, let's look at how it how this works a string character runs 20x characters 20x characters like this now if i store each character in memory it will take 20 bytes which is uncompressed if i use a run line algorithm this will uh, be like 20x right so 20 is the number of times which is the run count and x is the value which is the run value right and in our example first byte 20 is the run count and contains number of repetitions the second byte uh, is the run value and contains the actual repeated value in the run so you need only two bytes for this right 20 bytes is reduced to two bytes isn't that uh, marvelous right okay so compression can be used uh, in images as well so if you get a question like let's say um, something like this let's say um, a a b b b something like this if you compress this using r l e run length encoding uh, first byte will be the run count right so we have two and the run value is a we have two a's and here we have three b's okay now you can see that we have one byte here we have another byte here two bytes and here we have five bytes for five bytes reduced to two bytes that's how run length algorithm or encoding works okay. right so we can also use uh, compression uh, on images uh, as i told you we have the lossless compression in fact uh, rle is uh, a lossless compression because uh, i can using mathematical equations i can i mean using a formula i can turn this back into this and i haven't lost any uh, any uh, data right so that's uh, lossless uh, this can uh, be easily used in uh, bitmap images because uh, of the pixels now for example you can see that these pixels represent the same color not variations it's the same color same coding color coding so what i can do is i can uh, simply uh, you know uh, use the run length algorithm uh, encoding and uh, have store data of one color and count the number of uh, pixels uh, or the run count and store it in uh, two bytes uh, quite easy right so you see the implementation of this way and this is actually using uh, you know the one bit color scheme using run length and encoding the first three rows would be uh, 16 0 we have 16 zeros second one is also 16 zeros third one you can see uh, there are two zeros and uh, 12 ones and two zeros again right so you can see that uh, it's really easy it's really easy right so the first one takes only two bytes this one takes uh, <coughs> two for six bytes right but if you if you store each one uh, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 uh, reduced to 6, that's a great uh, reduction, right? right so not only images, we can also use this in uh, characters as well, other data. um okay so once it is compressed uh, if you turn it back to the original it is called uh, decompress and the other method is called uh, lossy compression uh, in lossy compression you can see that uh, um, 
you can see hence lossy some of the more subtle changes simply lose <coughs> some of the data lossy compression is not just used in uh, images mp3 for example is, is lossy uh, but you, ha you hardly see the difference like if you look at the wave sound and the mp3 sound of the same uh, you hardly see the difference but you see the uh, reduction of the size if the wave is like uh, 20 30 mb mp3 would be like 3 mb right it's a great reduction right what they have done is actually they have uh, kind of uh, approximated the values uh, now if it is an image of course for example now let's say this is blue and this is another variation of blue so instead of uh, storing uh, this variation of blue it will approximate it to this particular color so now you have two of the same blue color but originally it was not that blue color it was another variation of blue so you are going to lose that data that's what actually happens in uh, lossy compression right but for the naked dye you won't see the difference now you can uh, easily test this in uh, photoshop if you uh, uh, you know increase the uh, uh, you know compression you will notice that uh, you can you can you can go on compressing it uh, only at a very lesser value you start seeing the uh, effect Again, most of the listeners will never notice the difference, but a connoisseur, connoisseur, French word, right? To a connoisseur, whatever. MP3 uh, could uh, never replace live music or uncompressed sound files, even uh, if they do take up a large amount of storage space. Especially in live music, uh, you will see the difference in MP3. In, uh, even in some certain setups, uh, you will notice that MP3 does not really give that live effect or surround effect that much, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding bandwidth, we have looked at the file size and how images, sounds, text can be compressed using an algorithm like RLE. But most data also needs to be communicated over the wired and wireless networks. That's when you send. So you need to keep an eye on the bandwidth. If you imagine uh, a road network, the data size is the size of the vehicle or vehicle load you wish to transport. But also important is the size of the road. Right? If the size of the road is narrow, then uh, <coughs> we can't transfer uh, large amounts of data. right? So bandwidth also affects. So that's why most of the time compression is used, especially in... Uh, So basically, <coughs> um, what you should remember here is uh, the units that we use to measure the file size and uh, then why we need data compression that is to uh, you know save space, utilize space and uh, store more files and also use uh, limited bandwidth to send more data. Mm, and. Uh, uh, there are two methods of compressing uh, lossy and lossless <coughs> jpeg and mp3 are examples of lossy algorithms they lose uh, some of uh, their data when compressed and rle is a simple uh, algorithm to compress and it is a lossless compression and uh, it has two uh, values uh, two it uses two bytes for each uh, different data uh, one is keeping the first is keeping the run count the second is keeping the run value right understand and be able to explain how file storage is measured in bytes and be able to calculate file sizes that's easy right okay so that's the end of uh, this video uh, and await next is the final video